Hi, my name is Daniel Roth. I'm a program manager on the ASP.NET team. And this is getting started with ASP.NET Web API in ASP.NET MVC4. More and more websites like Facebook and Twitter are adding Web APIs to their sites to enable integration with native applications. ASP.NET Web API is a new framework that ships with ASP.NET MVC4 in Visual Studio 2012 to help you create HTTP services, or Web APIs, that can reach a broad range of clients. Let me show you how easy it is to create a Web API using ASP.NET Web API. Here I have an example application. It's a contact manager application. It lets me manage a list of people that I know. I can get my list of contacts. I can add new contacts or post new contacts. There we go. There's Fred. And then I can remove or delete existing contacts. These are all CRUD operations that you expect a web API to be able to support. I also have a Windows 8 App Store application that accesses the same data. Let me show you that. I'm going to get started for you. Here from within this Windows 8 App Store application, you can see the same data that you saw before. I can even see Fred that I added previously, and the contact that I removed isn't here. This is because both applications are pulling from the same data source, from the same Web API. In the case of this Windows 8 App Store application, it's using the new HTTP client, which ships in .NET 4.5 to access the Web API. In the case of the Web application, the web application is pulling down the data using jQuery. The web API application also includes an auto-generated help page. Let me click on this API link, and here I can see a full list of the URIs that are supported by the web API, and also the HTTP methods that each one supports. I can even see documentation that's being pulled from the XML comments in the code. If I click on one of these, let's pick the post, I can see documentation for this uh, specific Web API and also all of the parameters that it supports. I can even see example requests and responses uh, and their uh, formatting. Notice that Web API supports JSON, XML, and form URL encoded data out of the box. But you can also add your own formatters. Here I added two. I added one for text slash directory, which is a standardized format uh, for electronic business cards. This is the kind of format you might use if you wanted to import contact information into Outlook or to Gmail. You can also do binary formats. I added a custom formatter for image slash PNG. All of these formats play into the Web API implementation of HTTP content negotiation, which is a standardized way for clients to be able to request a specific format of a resource and then allows the server to decide what format is best. I can also access the Web API directly using the browser. Let me browse to API slash contacts. And using a simple convention with a file extension, I'm going to ask for the contacts data using XML, as XML. There's the full list of contacts. Similarly, I can ask for the data as JSON. Now, Internet Explorer doesn't know how to render JSON, but I can open it up in Notepad. There's the JSON data. ASP.NET Web API also supports the OData query operators. Uh, for example, here I can ask for um, not just all the contacts, but let's use the order by operator to request the contacts in order by name. And then maybe I'd like to only have the top two. We can even skip one. The OData query operators are supported independently uh, from the format. You can use them over JSON, XML, and of course over the OData format. Now let me show you how easy it is to create your own Web API. To do that, I'm going to go to Visual Studio 2012, and I'm going to do File, New Project, and I'm going to create a new ASP.NET MVC4 web application. Let's call this 
Contact Manager Simple. Let's create a, a simple version of the Contact Manager application that you saw previously. Now here I'm using the MVC4 project template, but I can use Web API from any project template fla flavor, including the uh, ASP.NET Web Forms uh, templates and also web pages websites. You can even host ASP.NET Web APIs from within your own process using the self-host functionality. And click OK, and this is going to bring up the new ASP.NET MVC4 project template uh, dialog. I'm going to select the Web API template. I have the option here of creating a new unit te test project. Let's go ahead and do that. Click OK. And this is going to set up my template for me. And it's doing it using NuGet. NuGet is a package management solution that's included with Visual Studio 2012. And all of the Web API assemblies and functionality are uh, made available through NuGet. There it's done. The project template includes for me by default a simple values controller, which just exposes a static list of values. Let's create a contacts controller to expose a contacts API. I'm going to right click on the models uh, folder, say add new class. Let's call this contact.cs. And then let's set up this, this contact type using the entity framework code first conventions. I'm going to add an ID. Let's add a name, an email, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to add the Web API. To do that, first I'm going to add a folder underneath the controllers directory so I have my Web API controllers kept separate. I'm going to right click and select Add Controller. And this is going to bring up the MVC4 Add Controller dialog. Let's call this new controller a contacts controller. And I'm going to pick from the uh, controller templates the API controller with read write actions using Entity Framework. I'm going to select the model type that I created previously. I don't have a data uh, context, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Let's call it contacts context. Great. Click Add. And what this is going to do is it's going to scaffold out for me a, web, a full Web API implementation that's backed by an Entity Framework code first uh, data store. There, it's done. And here's my contacts controller. Notice first that it derives from API controller, which is a new base type that's introduced with ASP.NET Web API. Uh, the actions on my controller, let me show you those by collapsing to definitions, map to the HP methods. Notice that we use a simple convention. The methods are prefixed with the HP method that they handle. So this get contacts action is a handles get request for the full list of contacts. I also have a get action for individual contacts. And then put post, delete, and so on. If I don't like the conventions, that's fine. Like for example, let's say I wanted this post contact action to actually be create contact. I just need to add the attribute to indicate which HP method I want it to handle. I happen to like the convention, so I'm going to keep them. If we look at the implementation of this generated controller, we'll see that it's uh, based off of the database con uh, DB context that was uh, created previously. And it's also using the, the first class HP programming model that was introduced with the new HTTP client in .NET 4.5. Here I, have, I can return an HTTP response message. And I also have access to HP request message through this request property. We are using the same HP programming model symmetrically on both the client and on the server. This allows me to do things like when I create the response to specify a specific status code. For example, here I'm saying I want the status code to be 201 created, which means that uh, in response to this post request, I'm saying that a new resource was actually created, a new contact was added. I can also specify specific headers, like the location header, which is the HTTP way of saying, this is where the new resource was actually created. Great. So I can build, run. And I have a working web application with a web API. 
I hope you've enjoyed learning about ASP.NET Web API. To find out more, I encourage you to go to www.asp.net slash Web API to find samples and videos and tutorials uh, that will help get you started even more. Thanks very much for watching.